Pilot Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we are going to be taking our PC and our quadcopter and upgrading it to the latest hottest beta flight. That is right. We are in 2022 and Betaflight is hotter, faster, better, more robust and more versatile than ever. And it is here and it is now and it is hot. So put on your seatbelt, pull up your PC, grab a quad and we're going to 10.8 and 4.3. Let's go. All right, pilots, I am excited, as you can tell. But here's the deal. I recently built this new quadcopter, and the flight controller's brand new. So it came with the latest, hottest beta flight already on it. Well, I uploaded it to the PC, plugged in beta flight, and lo and behold, I'm having issues. Not big issues, but enough issues that this is gonna be a problem. I can't enjoy my new quadcopter with the latest firmware on it because my configurator can't keep up. It's just simple as that. And guess what? I'm all about the hot new stuff, but when you have something and it's working and it's working good, why well, mess with it, right? And that's fine. If you don't want to, don't. But if you do want to, I'm going to walk you through it in this very simple video, and then we'll roll through and play around with some of the settings, maybe take a look at what it's got to offer, because times are a-changing. All right, pilots, so jump into the PC with me. Go ahead and open up a fresh Google tab. I'm going to give you a link down in the video description. Go ahead and put that into your browser, and what that's going to do is that's going to give you the Betaflight Configurator Releases page. Now, I do want to show you if we scroll down just a little bit right here, you're going to see that we have beta flight configurator 10.7.2 and right next to it in this little green bubble it says latest. And the reason why is because the new one is just a release candidate. Does it have bugs? Quite possibly. Is it going to work just fine? Most likely. Do I want to run it? Absolutely. So let's dive in and let's get it done. You'll notice right here in this brownish colored bubble, it does say pre-release. Now, if you do open this up and you happen to not see this, so that means on the top of your page, the highest one you see. So when I scroll up, see how my highest one is 10.8.0? If you scroll up and your highest one is the beta flight configurator 10.7.2, uh, go ahead and click right here where it says releases. It'll reload and you should be able to get it, but you'll probably already have it. So what we need to do now is figure out which file do we need. Okay, well that's going to depend on what type of operating system and computer that you have. If you have a Windows, you're going to run Windows. If you have a Mac or Linux, you will run that one. So me, myself, running a Windows, so I'm going to scroll down and you will see right here where it says assets. I'll click that and boom. There's all of the selections. For me, I'm running Windows, so I will click this one right here that says 10.8.0 win64.exe. If you're Windows, that one's you. If you're Mac, that's you. Linux, that's you. All right, let's click it. You'll see the download start in the bottom. Now, while that's downloading down in the bottom, anybody who has followed any of Drain Man's tutorials, you already know the deal. I like to keep it organized. So go ahead and pop open a folder and you'll head over to where you keep your FPV stuff. Mine is in this little handy dandy FPV folder. I'll open this up and I'll go to my Betaflight folder. If you don't have one, create one. Inside of here you'll see 10.7.0 which is the old in the past and we will delete that. I'm going to create a new folder, new folder, and I'm going to call that 10.8.0, baby. Yes, sir, you got that right. All right, so we'll throw that to the side, and we will go ahead and open our new download, which is right here. I will open this up. It's telling me don't run it, but obviously we're going to run it. It's going to say install for all users, recommended. Yes, let's do it. 
It's asking if I accept. You may or may not be able to see that due to the recording device. We do want English and I do accept the agreement. Follow along with me now. We'll hit next. This is a very important step to drain man's process and that is where we put the file. Personally, I don't like stuff all over the place. So what we will do is we'll click browse and this is where that trusty dusty little folder that we just created comes in use. So what I'll do is I'll scroll down to my local E, which is where I keep all my fun stuff. I'll open up FPV, I'll open up Betaflight and I'll click 10.8. We'll click OK and next and next and install. Voila. So the next thing it's saying is, do you want to start beta flight? So I'll go ahead and click finish and boom, we have the brand new beta flight 10.8 configurator. How exciting. Okay. Next step. If you would like to, I like to, you can or cannot. This next step is optional. What I'll do is I'll open up that folder where I created it. I'll open 10.8. I'll open the beta flight configurator folder. And I'll scroll down where I see the beta flight configurator. I'll right click and I'll pin to start. And what that does is it puts it right here inside of my start panel. That's just me. If you want to put it down in your taskbar, go ahead. If you don't want to do none of it, don't do it. Put it shortcut on your desktop. That's up to you. I just wanted to point that out because it's something that I like to do. Okay, so with our brand new Betaflight 10.8 open and ready to go, I'm going to just grab a little stack I've got here. This is the Lumineer all-in-one board. This is a very cool board. I have an awesome video on this board. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link for you down in the video description. But I'm going to grab this board and I'm going to plug it in. I know that the firmware on it is not that new, so that's why I wanted to use this. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in and we're gonna let it load up. Okay, so as you can see, it did not pop up as a selectable COM port. If I click right here where it says virtual mode, I'll drop down and there's no COM ports to choose from. And I'm kind of glad that that happened because now we can take a moment to walk you through what to do. So right here on the main page, you will see where it has the latest STM, USB, VCP drivers. You can download those here. The CP210s right here or Zadig in itself is also right here. One really awesome tool that I like to use, it is so easy to use, you don't even have to understand drivers or anything like that, is the Impulse RC Driver Fixer. Does it always work? No, but about 98 99% of the time, I don't have an issue with it. So we're going to go ahead and use that now as a perfect example. If you don't have it on your PC, we can just open this tab back up, click right here and hit Impulse RC Driver Fixer. Right here, download Impulse RC, and right here is the download. You'll see where it says Driver Fixer, boom, you'll download that right there, and you'll walk through the same process like we just did with Betaflight downloading a new program. Make sure you create a folder and put it in its perspective folder. So I'm going to open up a drive. I'm going to head over to my fun folder and what do you know? Impulse RC driver fixer. I'm going to give it permission, which you should not be able to see because I have to get permissions. There you go. Entering bootloader just like that. Let's jump back up. And look at that. It is in DFU STM32 bootloader. That's how I know it's working. So we need to let it finish doing what it does because it's installing the correct driver and we're on our way. All right, there we go. Success, drivers fixed. We did get a warning about Google Chrome being open. If you need to restart everything, go ahead. But what we'll do is we'll take a look. We've got our STM. I'll unplug and replug. There you go. We have our STM32 virtual COM port, COM14. I'll go ahead and click connect and voila. So many of the F7s and F4s are using a virtual COM port. That's that VCP that you've seen. It's a CDC serial. So it all depends on what you have. I've literally had two different quads, very similar, but every time I unplug one and plug in the next, 
I've got to change my drivers. So that's the beauty behind that Impulse RC driver fixer and why I thought it was very important to show you that tool. A lot of guys know about it, but if you're watching this video, maybe you don't. Let me know, we can make a video on drivers. So jumping into Betaflight, we've got here what you'll see on our Holy Bro Kakute H7, we've got Betaflight 4.2.11. And anytime you're curious about which firmware you have on your flight controller, you can head up to the top left of the configurator and find it right there. So that's a really awesome little thing to know. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this board up to 4.3. And yes, I'm excited about it, but before you just run off into the CLI and go flashing firmware, there's something you need to do if you want to do, and that is heading over to the CLI Jumping down here in the CLI command, do a diff all or a diff or a dump or a dump all. Get that information about this board and pull it off, stick it in a notepad. So something like dump all, and I mean look at this, hundreds of commands, lots and lots of code all types of stuff that is about your board. If you run into any issues, you'll have it backed up or maybe you just don't want to spend a lot of time resetting everything up or maybe you've just tuned this quad perfectly and you want everything the same. That is what this is for. But please bear in mind, between 4.2 and you may be even older to 4.3, there are things that won't just jump over. It will not work. Most of it will, some of it won't. So you don't wanna get yourself a bug by bringing something over that's just not gonna work. So it's a very simple process. You basically roll through the code, go ahead and open up so you can come here, open up something like Notepad++, go ahead and start a new one, throw the code in, and just weed through it, get rid of that stuff. And you can do it on a Notepad too, a regular Notepad. Get that stuff over, delete the things that are gonna mess you up, copy the rest and paste it here. It's a simple right click copy or control C and a right click paste or a control V. If you're having trouble with that or you need more information or you want a video, let your boy know. All right, let's keep moving forward. All right, pilots, now that we've gone over backing up your flight controller, that way you're saving it in case anything goes wrong or hey, use it in the future for troubleshooting. Backing up is really good. You really should create a folder and just keep it on your desktop so that way you can randomly do backups and if anything ever happens, you got your go-to file. And something very cool, something you're going to want to do is enable expert mode. You'll see that right here. And when I click that, over on the left, a bunch of new settings are gonna pop up. Let me show you. There's non-expert, there's full expert, which is very cool. No, you're not an expert, but more settings equals more fun. Now that we're rolling, what we wanna do is update the firmware on our flight controller itself. There's a few ways to do this. I've got a video on how to update the firmware on your flight controller, but like I said, we're in 2022 and times have changed. You can simply just click update firmware. Boom! All right, before we move forward, there's something very, very important that you need to know, and that is what is your target? So normally, you would have to go to the CLI, get your dump, get your info, pull your target out, or just look at it and remember it, or actually click connect, connect to your board, and you can look up in the top left and see what your target is. But guess what, pilots? 2022, beta flight 10.8, we ain't gotta do that no more. All I gotta do is come right here where it says select or auto detect your board to see available online firmware releases. How cool, so watch this. Boom, ah, it, already, it already did it anyways. What does it matter? We're on the Kakute H7. All right, so the release. This is up to you. You can go and grab just the release. You can go and grab the release and candidate or you can live all the way on the edge and get the development. Me personally, I would like to stay with release and release candidate. So here we go, right here we've got Betaflight 4.3.0-RC2. That is release candidate two. 
awesome. That means that they've made the firmware, they've updated it, they've made changes twice, and we're almost ready for the public. So go ahead and pick the one that works best for you. Me personally, I want the newest. Now that we've done that, we're able to load firmware online. I'm gonna click this button. It's downloaded it, it's prepped it, it's given me all the information about it, and then I'm ready to just go ahead and click this magical button called Flash Firmware. So just like that, it's flash, done, completed. We've got our green successful bar. It's that easy. You are now on the brand new Betaflight 4.3. If you are backing up something from a saved file, which me personally, I'm not. This is a new build. I have no interest in that. But if you are, now is the time. You'll log in, hit the CLI, drop in your dump or diff and get it popping. All right, so now that we're done and good to go, I will hit connect. It's going to ask me, do I want to apply custom defaults? Yes, you do. Please always click this. Personally, I like auto connect, so I will click that and it will automatically connect every time I disconnect and reconnect. So one of the things I like to do right off the bat after flashing is place my flight controller flat on the flattest, most levelest surface I can find and go ahead and click calibrate accelerometer. Very important and you should always do this. Let's jump over to the PID tuning tab and holy cow, look at all these new sliders. This is incredible. Wow, we've got damping, tracking, stick response, dynamic damping, drift, wobble, pitch damping, pitch tracking, master multiplier. Holy cow, this is incredible. How cool is this? Let's head over to the receiver. I do want to show you. Now, we're not going to see it on mine, but if you're running the appropriate build, the appropriate setup, or perfect little example, Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2, uh, it has a built-in FR Sky SPI receiver. You can just jump right in here to the receivers tab. You'll jump down to the bottom right next to save and refresh. It will say bind receiver. Wow. <laughs> No more going to the CLI, trying to figure out which command it is. No more holding the button. Hold the button, plug in. Oh my God, it's not working. Videos, YouTube, the whole work. Strain man, help me out. No, none of that. You just click buy and receiver <laughs> and go on with your life. All right, we've got some other awesome stuff. We've got a whole new tab. Oh, look at this. This is presets. And uh, I'm seeing Bardwell, I'm seeing BMS Thomas, I'm seeing Drain Man. Wait, where's Drain Man? You've got some awesome, awesome pilots on here. I mean, look at this. Heads up, we've got Vanny. You know I'm a Vanny fanny. We've got UAV Tech. That guy's great. He's created half the stuff in here. This is awesome. So presets are really cool, and they're not just about flight controller PIDs or flight controller rates. You can do everything from radios, VTXs, it goes on and on. These guys have all types of videos and setups. Go play with that, this is awesome. So you've got less gyro filtering with a higher PND. They've even changed the way that they handle D altogether. The derivative is entirely different. You've got more accurate loop times. They've got massive scheduler, DMA code improvements, holy macaroni. You've got multi-dynamic notch, whoo! You've got PT3 based RC smoothing completely revised. You've got RPM crossfading, which is uh, pretty freaking incredible. I read a little bit on it. Holy cow. Check this stuff out. It goes on and on. Let's go ahead and head over to our PID tuning and you'll see that they've completely redone Feed Forward. Feed Forward has got its whole section here where you can deal with jitter, smoothness, averaging boost, max rate transition. I mean, holy cow, if you like to tinker, <laughs> you're good to go. All types of dynamic filter stuff, linear dynamic mixer options, feed forward in level and horizon modes. You've got actual rates like I've showed you, which is the new Betaflight default. You've got Crossfire V3 and IRC Ghost, Immersion RC Ghost 
link improvements, check this out. We can head over to the receivers tab, which they've moved this stuff around. Right here, this receiver stuff used to be over in configuration. It is no longer there, but watch this. We can drop down and click ghost. You can drop down and uh, hit all kinds of stuff that I don't think was here. 4.3, they've really put a lot into this. Uh, you guys should consider heading over to their support page and show a little support. Jump on their Patreon, show these guys some love. You can't imagine the countless hours they spend on this stuff. Let's go check this out right here. If we head over to the Motors tab, and I'm not going to go crazy, I'm not going to show you everything, but... I do want to show you this. You can reorder your motors by clicking this. <laughs> Look at this. All you, well, you do need a battery plugged in and take your propellers off. And it says that right here in red. So if you do it, it's on you. Uh, but you can literally start this up. You can reorder your motors with this. Then you just click them and it'll spin it and let you know where they're at. You can change your motor direction. And this quadcopter right here is all screwed up. I've turned the ESC sideways, so all of my motors are in the wrong spot. No more remapping motors. Anybody who's dealt with that, I've got a full video on it, but you don't need it anymore. <laughs> Keep in mind that the CLI has also made changes. There are a lot of things from the original CLI from 4.2 that are not going to be the same over in 4.3. All right, pilots, I hope that you guys have the new 10.8 on your PC. I hope that you have the new 4.3 on your quadcopter. I hope that you are more 2022 than ever. I wish you guys a happy new year and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.